My name is Benjamin Sandejas, and I'm a pediatric surgeon at Boston Children's Hospital. Recurrent tracheoesophageal fistulas are an unfortunate complication that can happen after the repair of an esophageal atresia and tracheoesophageal fistula. As depicted in this illustration, the reason why they happen is because the repair of the esophagus and the repair of the trachea are often left next to each other, and so a problem with either of the repair sites can lead to a recurrence of the tracheoesophageal fistula, which unfortunately happens between 5 to 14% of the time. The treatment of recurrent tracheoesophageal fistulas is challenging. The majority of these patients, unfortunately, can suffer a re-recurrence after a surgical approach. Others have advocated that we try an endoscopic means to this with less morbidity, less invasiveness. However, they often require multiple endoscopic attempts and they're often not as successful as we would like them to be. At Boston Children's Hospital, within the RSF Geo and Airway team, we have developed an approach to treat these for them to never come back. Essentially, it involves an operation that we mobilize the entire esophagus off of the trachea, isolate the fistula, divide it, repair it in a way that we remove the entire diverticulum that goes into the airway, removing all this inner mucosa so that they can have a normal looking airway afterwards. The more important component is this. We essentially perform a posterior tracheopexy, which essentially is suturing the posterior membranous portion of the trachea to the spine. So that that repair site is completely separate from the esophageal repair site, which is also rotated into the right chest with a rotational esophagoplasty. This way, the spine supports the trachea repair site and the esophagus is away from that repair site, completely eliminating the risk for it to coming back. Over the last nine years, we've done about 62 of these repairs in children of all ages, the majority of which have already had a previous attempt of repair that has failed. We've looked very hard to try to find a re-recurrence and we have not found a single one with endoscopic or radiologic contrast studies. All these patients have been doing very well. We believe that going forward, recurrent tracheoesophageal fistulas whenever approached surgically, should be treated with a posterior trachopexy and a rotational esophagoplasty. Given the challenging nature of these repairs, they should be repaired at centers with experience and expertise with esophageal and airway surgery.